Hey guys, the Intel and Blender developers have been collaborating to bring us an incredible new Blender feature that can dramatically reduce your render times. I'm told it's expected to be available in the next week or so, and that's why I'm going to demonstrate it for you today. I'll put a link in the description as well if you want to get notified when it's been released. And I've got some massive news as well. I've released a new add-on today called Pixel Modeler AI. It allows you to copy a 2D image and then paste it into Blender as a 3D object. And it has a powerful set of tools that allow you to modify the object way beyond the limits of the original depth map. Find out more at theblendermarket.com, link in the description below. So basically, most people are going to utilize Blender's compositor denoising either to clean up some custom AOVs, light groups, shadow passes and things like that, or more often to dramatically reduce render times and increase the quality of the final render by using an advanced multipass denoising technique, which is usually configured specifically for each scene. The trade-off is longer denoising time, which in most cases is insignificant compared to the reduction in overall render time and the much better quality. But the problem has been, until now at least, that with some scenes, if they render you know, in a few seconds, then the extra denoising time would increase the overall render time. And that's primarily because the compositor's denoising system was not GPU accelerated. It was limited to the CPU. But this new feature allows it to run on the GPU. And that will have a massive impact on performance. For example, this scene from uh, the award-winning 3D artist, illustrator, and concept artist, Eben Schumacher, renders in five seconds with just basic denoising. But with a more advanced denoising network, that additional denoising time that wouldn't usually matter is going to be detrimental. As we can see here, the render time has increased to 17 seconds, which is going to have a massive impact if you render in a large animation. And by the way, I would definitely recommend checking out Eben's website, which is ebenschumacherart.com. It's got some really incredible work on there. And also, if you're interested in improving your skills, he's got some pretty slick looking courses available on his shop. All right, so let's first demonstrate this by denoising some passes like ambient occlusion and light groups. And you can see without any denoising, if we've got these muted, we get around about four seconds, so three and a half seconds. But if we turn these on and then render again, and the time has increased now to 28 seconds. So we've got 25 seconds worth of denoising just because it's a 4K render. So we're now in the new version of Blender. Let's see how fast it denoises now with this new feature. And that's completed in seven seconds. So we've reduced the denoising time by nearly eight times, and we've reduced the overall render time by 20 seconds, which is absolutely incredible. So let's see what sort of an impact this has for multipass denoising techniques. And I'm going to use Turbo Tools because A, it's my add-on, and B, because it will automate the process of setting up all these different denoising networks for me, and it will also set the samples for me as well. And if you want to grab yourself a bargain, Turbo Tools is 30% off from Black Friday through to Cyber Tuesday at theblendermarket.com. So let's go into the compositor. Make sure we've got the turbo render enabled for that more advanced denoising network. And we'll give this a render and see if it reduces it from 17 seconds. And 5.15 seconds. So that's actually reduced the denoising time by more than 10 times, basically. So looking at a more typical scene like this one from Evermotion, which is 1920 by 1400, so quite low resolution. And then across the bottom, we've got the overall render time. And then in blue, it shows us the number of seconds it took to sample. And then in red, that's the number of seconds it took to denoise. The bottom one's a bit longer. These are the samples chosen by the creator of the scene that were necessary to get a decent result with that single pass denoiser from the render settings. The turbo ones are much shorter because turbo can use far fewer samples thanks to its more advanced denoising system, which is why it can render so much faster. So at the bottom, we've got the Open image denoiser from the render settings, which is on the GPU. And as expected, this is really quick, 1.5 seconds. So moving on to turbo render in draft mode, the CPU is around about four times longer to denoise than the GPU mode we've got here. And the same story, if we change turbo render to high denoise mode, well, it's around about five times faster to denoise 
on the GPU than it was on the CPU. So not much of a, a big impact in a, such a low resolution scene. But if we move on to this scene from 3D Shaker, because the resolution is so much higher, that's going to make it a lot more difficult for the denoise nodes in the compositor when they're running on CPU mode. So again, the Open Image Denoiser from the render settings is incredibly fast, two seconds. And again, this is just because it's denoising that one pass. And because of that, the input image needs more samples in order to get it to a higher quality so that the denoiser can do a good job. Moving on to Turbo Render, in draft mode, the GPU denoiser has reduced the denoise time by five seconds, so it's halved it. But this is where we really see the difference. In high denoise mode, where the denoising network is more complex, we're reducing the denoising time by over a minute, which is going to have an absolutely massive impact on your overall render time. So a massive thanks to the developers that have made this possible. You've got two developers from Intel, Stefan Werner and Nikita Sergienko. From Blender Foundation, you've got Sergey, who apparently, every time he touches his keyboard, an Autodesk investor sheds a tear. And then you've got Omar, of course, who is the guy who has converted the old archaic CPU compositor into a GPU powerhouse. And if you want to get notified when this feature is available for you to try, then make sure you subscribe to the projects.blender.org link in the description below. And that's it. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.